Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to Office 365 Concepts. In this particular video, we will be talking about IMAP migration. We will be discussing what is IMAP migration and in what scenarios IMAP migration is performed. We will be discussing what are limitations of IMAP migration, what are the prerequisites or the steps those are involved in IMAP migration, and then I will demonstrate to you how to create IMAP migration endpoint and we will migrate emails from Outlook.com account to Office 365 account. Also, I will be showing you how to troubleshoot the migration process using PowerShell commands. So first, let's understand what is IMAP migration. IMAP migration is used to migrate emails from the source email system to Office 365. Let's assume you use Outlook.com to manage your emails. The users of your organization use Outlook.com to send and receive emails. So that means Outlook.com is the email provider for your organization. Now let's say you decided to move to Office 365. You want to use Office 365 services and you want Exchange Online to host your mailboxes and the contents of the mailboxes. So the first option that you have in this scenario is to export the contents of the mailboxes into a PST file and export that PST file to the Office 365 mailbox. But this option is not feasible if you have multiple mailboxes or users in your organization. If you have more than 1000 users or 10,000 users in your organization, you can't just export the PST file for each and every user and import those PST files to Office 365. So in this scenario, you can use IMAP migration. But there are few limitations to IMAP migration that you should be aware of before you start migrating mailboxes using IMAP migration. IMAP migration is not supported between two Office 365 organizations. Once you have migrated your mailboxes from source email system to Office 365, you cannot offboard them. That means you cannot move those mailboxes back to the source email system. IMAP migration is not supported in on-premise exchange servers. If you want to migrate mailboxes from on-premise exchange server, you can use cutover migration, staged migration, or exchange hybrid migration. IMAP migration doesn't support messaging records management or archive policies. If you have applied archive policies in your source email system, and if emails are moved to archive, IMAP migration will not migrate those emails. IMAP migration migrates only emails of the mailbox. It does not migrate calendar items, contacts, or tasks. And this is very important to know that IMAP migration does not migrate calendar, contacts, and tasks of the mailbox. By using IMAP migration, we can migrate only the emails. You can migrate a maximum of 500,000 emails from a user's mailbox. And the maximum size of the email that can be migrated using IMAP migration is 35 MB. So now let's understand how IMAP migration works or what are the steps those are involved in IMAP migration. If you have recently signed up for Office 365 tenant, then you need to verify your domain that you will be using for the email addresses. After that, you will create users in Office 365 and you need to assign licenses to these users. Then you will create a CSV file and you will add all the users that you want to migrate from the source email system to Office 365. Once you have the CSV file, you will create a migration endpoint so that Office 365 can connect with the source email system. Then you will create a migration batch and you will start the migration. Once migration batch is synced, 
you will point MX Tracker to Office 365 so that emails start routing to Office 365. Once you verify that the emails are getting routed to Office 365, you will complete the migration batch. And once migration batch is completed, you can let your users know that now they are using Office 365 as a service. So this is the flow of IMAP migration. Now let me show you practically how to perform IMAP migration. In this particular demo, we are going to migrate emails for this particular user who is using Outlook.com services. As of now, this user's emails are hosted on Outlook.com. That is Outlook.live.com. We are going to migrate all his emails from Outlook.com to Office 365 using IMAP migration. So first, let's create a user. I will not be adding the domain because I already have that verified in this particular tenant. And MX record is already pointing to this particular Office 365 tenant. So let's create a user. And I will create it as target user. And let's give it a password. Next, let's assign a license to this particular user. Click next, finish adding. So we have created the user. Now let's check if the mailbox is provisioned for this particular user or not. So let's log in with this particular user here. Target user at and the password. So looks like the mailbox is provisioned for this user. That's it. So now what we are going to do, we will migrate these emails to this particular user who is currently hosted on Office 365. So the next step is we will create a CSV file. The CSV file that we need to create for IMAP migration requires certain attributes of both the users, source account and the target account. So first we are going to mention email address colon. Under email address, we will use the email address of the Office 365 account, and that is target user at 0365techlabs.com. The next column is user name. Under username, we will use the email address of the source mailbox, and the source mailbox is source user one at outlook.com. Let me just verify. It is source user one at outlook.com. And the third column will be password. And the password will be this user's password, the source mailbox password, which is This one. Now let's save this file. And let's save it on desktop. So let's say IMAP dot. We will save it as CSV file. And we will select this one CSV. Click save. The file is saved. Now the next step is we will create a migration endpoint. To create migration endpoint, we will go to recipients, then migration, click on these three dots and then click migration endpoints. Here we will click on plus and here it will ask you what type of migration you are going to perform. So as of now, we are going to perform IMAP migration. So we will select IMAP and then click next. 
Here you need to type, you need to specify the server details. These server details are for the source email system. So in this demo, we are going to migrate emails from Outlook.com. So here we will mention the server details for Outlook.com. And for Outlook, it is Outlook.Office365.com. Authentication will remain basic. Encryption will remain SSL and port number will be 993. Click next. And here you need to mention a name for this particular endpoint. For example, IMAP migration endpoint. Click next. That's it. The migration endpoint is created. And once the migration endpoint is created, the next step is to test the migration endpoint. And for that, we will run test hyphen migration server availability hyphen IMAP because this is IMAP endpoint. And then we will use switch remote server. Under remote server, we will specify the server name of the source email system. That is outlook.office365.com. And then we will mention the port number which is 993 for IMAP and press enter. It should say success or pass. If it is failing, that means your endpoint is not created properly. So here it says result success. So that means the endpoint is created properly and we can create the migration batch and we can start the migration. And the next step is to create a migration batch. So under migration, we will click on this plus sign. Here it will ask you what type of migration you are going to perform. You are going to migrate to Exchange Online or you are doing offboarding. That means migrate from Exchange Online. So as of now, we are going to migrate emails from a different source email system to Exchange Online. So we will select migrate to Exchange Online. Again, it will ask you what type of migration you are going to perform. You are going to perform hybrid migration, staged, cutover, IMAP, or Google. So we are going to perform IMAP. We will select IMAP migration and then click next. Here we will select the CSV file that we just created. Select this and click next. This is the endpoint details. No changes are required here. Click next and you can give it a name. Let's say test batch. This is the name for the migration batch. Click next and no changes required here. Now here you can select if you want to start the batch later or as soon as you click next, the batch will start automatically. If you want to schedule this batch for later for a different time. So as per the timing, you will specify here this batch will automatically start. So I want to run this batch now. So I'll select this option automatically start the batch and click next. So let's wait for a few seconds. Now it says saving completed successfully. Click OK. Now here you can see the batch is running and right now it is in syncing state. Now let's check from PowerShell. If you want to check the migration batch from PowerShell, for that you can run get hyphen migration batch, press enter. This command will tell you if batch is running, what is the status and what is the type of the migration that you are performing and this is the name of the batch. If you want to check more details, you can simply add pipe FL next to this command. And here you can see all the details of the migration batch. As of now, it is syncing. This is the name test batch. State is active. Next, you can see what time it was created, what time it was started, the batch, what time batch was started. And you can also check as of now, it is still running. But here you can also check if how many items are uh, moved, how many items are skipped, and you can check all those details as well. If you want to check the details for a particular user, for that you can run get hyphen migration user. 
and hyphen identity. And here you need to mention the name of the user who is within the batch. So let's say you want to check the status of migration for a particular user within the batch. So let's type the name. So here you can see the batch for this particular user is still syncing. So let's say within the CSV file, we have added, let's say 50 users in the same format. Like I have added target user email address. Same way you can add multiple email addresses here. Here source email addresses and the password of these users. So same way if you want to check, let's say a different user status, you can run this command. You can change the email address and it will show you what is the status for that particular user migration. If you want to check more details, you can add PipeFL and it will give you more details related to the migration. Let's go back to the batch. It is still syncing. And here we can see the target user that we just created. Few emails are moved. And this particular email was sent to source user one at outlook.com, which is the source mailbox. This one. Here we can see test nine. And this email is now showing under target user. So that means the migration is working properly and emails are moving. We can see test eight as well, test seven, test six, test five. So the migration is still running and emails are moving. So the state of this migration batch has been changed from syncing to synced. And here we can see synced mailboxes one out of one. We have only one user in this particular CSV file. So that is the reason it is saying one out of one is synced. Apart from that, if we go to view details, now we should see some more details about this migration. Under skipped items, we do not see any item because there is no item that is skipped. Data migrated will show you how much data is migrated from the source email system to the target email system that is Office 365. Migration rate will show you the rate of the migration that is being performed. Last successful sync date. This is the date and time. And here you can see in progress duration for how long this particular batch is running. And if we click on here, download the report for this user, we should see a few more details. So now it is giving us the details related to the batch. So here you can see the date and time when this particular request was created, when the migration batch was created. After that, this particular request connected to the target mailbox. This is your Office 365 tenant initial domain. After that, you can check the stage or the state of this particular migration, how much percent is completed if it is under incremental sync. Incremental sync is basically, uh, let's say you are running migration and uh, in the source mailbox, there are still few emails. Those are being delivered. So those emails will be transferred from or the migrated from the source email system to the target email system during incremental sync. And after that, you can check if number of items, those are migrated. Here you can see nine items are migrated. There are only nine emails in this particular mailbox. This is the welcome email that was sent. So apart from that, there are only nine emails. Those are within the source mailbox. So these nine emails are being migrated to target mailbox. So this is how you can analyze the entire logs and you can check if it is failing or if it is running properly. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.